Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah. Amma ba'd, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, I would like to welcome you to another episode on our series, Stories of Kings. Usually kings would have someone by their side who's their minister, and the minister is usually a very wise person, someone that has a lot of experience and, and good public relations to kind of help them manage things. And this king noticed that even though he's the king and he's the wealthiest and richest and most powerful person in his kingdom, yet he had so much stress and sometimes at night he couldn't sleep. But then he noticed that his minister had no worries whatsoever and his minister was always happy and joyful. And, and, and no matter what he asked him or what said to him, he's always like grateful and praying, alhamdulillah, thank you God for everything. And he's always grateful. And, and so the king asked him one day, my, 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 my you know, minister, I have a question for you. Come over here. And he came to him and said, here's, here's my question for you. I'm the king. I'm the wealthiest person. I'm the richest, the most powerful. I'm supposed to be peaceful and restful. And you work for me. And yet I see you all the time and you're just smiling and happy and comfortable and, 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 and faithful and, and grateful. What's the secret? And so the minister smiled and said, your honor, it's called the 99 rule. He said, the what? He said, it's called the 99 rule. He said, you better explain it to me because I, I need to be more happy. I need to learn and crack this 99 rule. He said, sure, my king. Tonight, I need you to be free late at night and we're going to do a little test. He said, sure, whatever you want me to do to figure out this 99 rule. He said, sure. So late at night, the king had one of his guards, a very poor person, and he's always standing and guarding the king, one of the guards of the king. And so at night, of course, he goes home and the guard goes home with his family and, and, and their little uh, residence that they have. So this minister says to the king, get, get a little uh, bag and, and in that little bag or suit or whatever, let's put a hundred coins of gold. This is about like 50 or $60,000 in today's world. He says, just put it in a bag, a hundred coins of gold. And so they went and he told the king to wrap his face. So the king grabbed his face like he was just an average person. So nobody could recognize him. They went to the house of that soldier late at night that guards the king, knock on the door and, and he opens it. He finds the minister and someone else who's all covered up. He could not figure out who that person was. And he said, well, good minister, what brings you late at night? Hopefully everything is good in the palace. He said, yes, everything is good and safe in the palace. However, the king had a gift for you. And he said, what is it? Now, right before he gave it to him, the bag with a hundred coins of gold in it, he took one out and in front of the king said, King, watch this. Then he put it in his pocket. So now the bag only has 99 pieces of gold. And he gave it to him and says, the king gives you a hundred coins of gold as a gift. He said, oh my God, please thank him so much. You have no idea how much I needed it. I have so many financial problems and my kids and my family, we couldn't do this and we couldn't do that. Thank you, God bless the king and, and, and thank you for me so much. A hundred coins of gold, I can never thank him enough. And so now the minister goes and the king goes back to the palace. What happens? What happens is that guard opens the bag and starts counting the hundred coins of gold and his wife and his kids are so happy and grateful. The king gave us a hundred coins of gold and they counted one, two, three, four, 98, 99 and they couldn't find the hundredth one. So what happens now? They start searching for the hundred. Maybe we dropped it over here. Maybe we dropped it by the door. Maybe we dropped it inside. Maybe we dropped it outside. And now the, 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 that guard has his kids all night searching for it. Maybe that fell over here. Maybe that fell over there. And, and he could not sleep and his kids could not sleep because they, they realized they lost a coin of gold. Where did that coin of gold go? So in the morning, he comes. The guard comes to the palace and thanks the king and says to the king, thank you so much. Your, you know, your majesty, I can never thank you enough for the, for the gold that you gave us and it means so much. And then the minister looked at him and said, you look so tired. You look restless. What happened? He said, I couldn't sleep all night. He said, why? He said, because, because, because we were missing one coin of gold and we were looking for it all night. And the minister looks at the king and says, did you figure out the 99 rule? And the king said, yes, I figured it out. So what's the moral of this story? The moral of the story, my brothers and sisters, is the law, God, out of his mercy and love for us, will give us a hundred blessings. A hundred beautiful blessings. What do we do? The 99 beautiful blessings that we have in front of us, 
we forget about all of them. And that one thing that's missing, that one little thing that's missing, out of the hundred, there's just one thing that's missing, that's all our mind and our heart and our worries and our stress is in that one little thing. If I'm healthy for, a hundred, for 99 days, 99 days I'm healthy, and then there's one day that I'm sick, it's that one day that, oh my God, why is this happening to me? I, what, why is this always, I'm always this and I'm always, I forget the 99 days of health. If I have 99 days in which my bank account is full and I'm doing very good and there's one day where, where things are financially struggling, it's God, why is this always him and, I'm, and I don't sleep and I'm stressing over it. The moral of the story is God gives us 99 blessings. But what Shaitan does is makes us focus on that one little thing that's missing, just that one little blessing that's missing. So the secret to happiness and joy is life was not meant to be perfect. Perfection is for Jannah. Perfection is for heaven. It's for the hereafter. In this world, life is not complete. Allah says in the Quran, Allah says in the Quran, verily in this life, I don't, it doesn't matter who you are. You could be rich or poor or faithful or unfaithful or a Muslim or not Muslim or tall or short or white or black or what, wherever, wherever you live, wherever you are, whoever you are, Allah says, guaranteed, I will test you with one day you're healthy, and then the next day you're sick. One day you have wealth, and the next day you have financial problems. One day, one day your family's there next to you, the other day somebody that you love and is dear to you passes away and dies. And through it all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends blessings and prayers and grace and well-being to who? To those who are inflicted by it, remember the key word, which is to Allah we belong and to him we return. Inna rillahu wa inna ilayhi raji'un. To Allah we belong and to him we return. Because just like he gave me the 99, if he kept one back, it is from Allah. And I am grateful and thankful for whatever he throws my ways. Which reminds me, my brothers and sisters, of the story of a lady, one of the Sahabi at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Her husband goes to work and she's playing with her little daughter. And what happens is as she's carrying her little daughter, her daughter dies in her arms. Now, anybody in the world normally would freak out and scream and shout and, and, and what can you do when your little, most beautiful baby, precious baby dies in your hands? But what she, does she do? She holds her baby, she washes the baby, wraps the baby and puts her in her bed. And then the husband comes and what does she do? She takes the husband to their bedroom and spends some time, private time with them and is talking with him and having a normal conversation and they're laughing and talking. And then she says to her husband, by the way, something very strange happened to our neighbors today. And he said, what is it? She said, well, someone trusted them with an amana. Some of them would give them something as a trust. And he said, when I come back, I need to get it. They said, of course, it's yours. When you come back, we'll give it back to you. She said, today he came to pick it up, the trust that he left with them, but they will not give it back to him. They said, no, we won't give it back to you. And her husband got very angry. He said, I'm going to fight those people. Of course, if somebody gives you something that is a trust and he wants it back, you have to give it back to him. She said, well, Allah gave you your daughter as a trust. And today Allah called her back. So say, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And he wanted to scream and wanted to shout that he lost his daughter, but he remembered that it's a trust from Allah. And yet he, he was so angry that after Fajr prayer, he went to the Prophet والسلام, and said, Prophet of Allah, my wife did not even give me the chance to be angry or, or, or sorrowful or sad for my daughter. She did this, this, this. He said, well, barakallahu lakuma fi laylatikuma hadi. You know, the night that you spent with her, that time that you spent with her, the private moment, Allah has put a seed in her and you will have the greatest blessings to come from that. And subhanAllah, not shortly after that, nine months later, he was blessed with a child, with a son, and then another son, and then a third son, until he got seven children, all of whom were Sahaba, all of whom memorized the Quran, all of whom were some of the best and greatest Muslims ever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he keeps one from us, remember that he has given us 99. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and replace all of your life with happiness and joy, fulfilling it. Have a wonderful day. Salaam alaikum.